Thank you so much for inviting me to speak today about uh, climate and the environment and uh, priorities for where we should spend our money. It was in 2010 that the Pentagon asserted that climate change is a grave threat to our national security. Under now President Biden, and that's uh, 11 years later, uh, the Department of Defense is uh, taking the climate threat seriously, and they're considering the climate emergency in its analysis, planning, war games, etc. Biden's Department of Defense Strategic Sustainability Plan calls for reduced reliance on fossil fuels and increased reliance on renewables, with the Navy in particular moving towards a green fleet and bases powered with solar. Well, I haven't actually seen the actual percentage figures for their carbon reductions that they are planning, nor have I seen a timeline. But what I'm asking today is, what are the plans and strategies to address the climate emergency here in Maine and across the US? Most climate scientists and youth climate activists advocating for a survival planet and a survival future, the same kids that we just heard about, they tell us we have to reduce our carbon emissions to net zero by 2030. And that's just nine years from now. Most plans, including the Maine Climate Action Plan and Biden's climate plan, call for emissions reductions of just 50 to 52 percent. Maine's is actually 45 percent by 2030. And 100 percent or net zero, Maine's is just 80 percent by 2050. According to research by the World Resources Institute, to reach the U.S. 230, 2030 goal, 50% of electricity must come from wind, solar, and other renewables, a pace that is much faster than most forecasts predict. And we need basically to get off coal power. All new car sales need to rise from 2% of the market today to close to 100%. And we do know car manufacturers are gearing up for that. Also needed is industry and homes moving to energy efficiency technologies and weatherization. And Biden has a 30 by 30 plan, which would conserve 30% of our land in sustainably managed forests and agricultural lands where carbon absorbing techniques are practiced is part of the administration strategy. Well, yesterday in an interview with The Guardian, which I happened to catch, Biden's climate envoy, John Kerry, said that it's going to take 50 percent of the carbon emissions reduction uh, to reach net zero. It's going to come from new technologies not yet invented. Responding to Kerry, leading climatologist Michael Mann said, well, we already have the technology for clean energy that we need. We just lack the incentives and the will to rapidly mobilize large solar and wind installations, microgrids, and industrial-sized battery facilities to store energy. So we have the technologies, but not the incentives or will. And if you're my age or near that, maybe you watched Al Gore's film back in 2006 when he said the same thing. We have the technologies today in 2006, just not the incentives or the will. So here in Maine, there's good news about incentives and strategies that could quickly get our state on an accelerated path to carbon emissions reductions. In the legislature this session, there are two complementary bills that create incentives and a strategy to re de reach the reduction goals. LD 1659, heard in the Environmental and Natural Resources Committee last week, would create a statewide clean energy and sustainability accelerator, also known as a green bank. And that would use public and private funds to finance energy efficiency, clean energy, and other climate solutions. 
with 40% of the investments going toward low income and communities of color. The bank would be able to accept funding, possibly $100 million or more, from the National Clean Energy and Sustainability Accelerator, which is a key component of Biden's American Jobs Plan, and it would leverage private capital. It's projected this would generate more than a billion dollars in investments for climate solutions over the next 10 to 15 years. And I would hope that a bunch of that would go towards the schools, uh, where actually energy is the number two budget item on almost every school budget. Um, the main green bank would be operated by Efficiency Main Trust, which will identify projects and initiatives for investment. The other bill, which is a bipartisan bill, LD 1708, it just got its number this week. It's an act to create the Pine Tree Power Company, and it has a tentative hearing date this Thursday, May 20th, in the Energy, Utilities, and Technology Committee. The Pine Tree Power Company, a local consumer-owned utility, is projected to deliver lower cost, cleaner, and more reliable power than the two investor-owned utilities, CMP, Avangrid, and Versant, formerly known as Amera and Bangor Hydro. Pine Tree Power, governed by a board of Maine people, will own the poles and lines, and electricity rates will not be based on investment returns to stockholders. CMP and Versant have consistently opposed cost-effective energy programs and renewable energy solutions such as solar. Because renewables and energy efficiency technology is cost-effective, the consumer-owned utility will invest in those technologies, resulting in lower costs for main ratepayers. For more information on this concept, you can go to ourpowermain.org. And I, I encourage everybody to consider looking at their website and supporting this bill. In conclusion, one of the strategies to transition us from fossil fuels to di is divestment in fossil fuel companies. Today, a global coalition of 36 faith institutions has announced they are divesting from fossil fuels immediately or within five years. Strategies such as Maine's proposed Green Bank offer a place where those divested funds could be reinvested. And I'm wondering today if we might propose to the Pentagon that they consider tracking their reductions in fossil fuels and put, turning that money back over to green banks and other uh, renewable strategies for our country to give our kids a future. Thanks.